Hey, good morning, y'all. Josh with Severe Weather. I hope you're having a great, blessed week, and I want to present you with some major weather coming uh, in the form of snowfall here across the west and then eventually the north and the northeast, and we're looking more and more at what could be, uh, believe it or not, the only or first or whatever you want to call it, nor'easter of the winter season here in the northeast early next week. I'm going to share my screen with you here and uh, going to show you the graphic that I put together. Now, I, I don't want to mislead everybody and show you these snow totals coming all from this nor'easter, we're actually going to have multiple storms. This is just the GFS output for the next 16 days. Uh, but in, in the middle of all of this is going to be what I think could be our, our biggest storm of the season for New England and maybe even parts of the Northeast, just kind of depending on how things come together. But it's the month of March. We often see some big snowfalls in the Northeast in March. And the reason for that is uh, is kind of twofold. One, the uh, the ocean waters are beginning to warm up and can carry more moisture with them first of all that gets you more intense storms and two the jet stream can be more ample in march as it's kind of a battle this time of the year between warming across the southern united states and cold air still coming down in waves from canada uh, as we still get to the tail end of the winter season and you haven't seen much snow so uh, a little bit encouraging to see some of these amounts here but if you're in the mid-atlantic region you're of course wanting to see a lot more and that is still possible um, this is not a complete cancel of winter for the mid-atlantic region it just looks like with the projected storm track next week that the better chances again remain to the near and to the north and west of 95 but this is about five days out and it could still change but if you see back across the great lakes uh ohio over the next couple of weeks we definitely are going to have some chances for more snow so let's break down what's going on in the atmosphere this is the water vapor image you can see this is the storm we're going to be tracking. It's spinning off of the Oregon and Washington coastline. Here we are Thursday morning. The storm is expected. We, we kind of have a rule uh, from a meteorologist named Norm McDonald that says the latitude approximately where the storm moves into the U.S. is going to be the latitude where it leaves the U.S. on the East Coast. So uh, northwestern Oregon is about equal to eastern Maine. So the storm is here now. Give it five days. It will likely be somewhere uh, near the main sea coast. Now, in between, we've got um, several impulses coming out of the southwest, a very active uh, water vapor here. You can see the atmospheric river sending moisture into central and northern Cal. Uh, the upper low here is just going to take that moisture and drive it on into the east. Um, that's drive it eastward, of course, and we're going to see coast to coast storminess here over the next several days. Uh, we do have a disturbance coming out of the uh, Baja region of California, setting moisture up and over this high pressure zone. And that is continuing to produce some thunderstorms in North Texas and Southern Oklahoma and Arkansas this morning. And as the uh, day, day wears on, uh, we're going to see the boundary that contains all this moisture slowly shifting east and southeast. And I don't think we're talking a major severe weather outbreak, but I definitely think you've got to be on your toes in the south just in case as we do have this clash of air masses and a fast enough jet stream to produce some stronger storms. Um, you can see though this flow out of the northwest, this is bringing the colder air down into New England and this is going to continue to shift kind of south and west with time as we head into next week. It's going to have to wait though for this faster westerly flow to get out of the way before we can see that cold air getting uh, drawn southeastward from Canada, but it looks like the first half of next week is when we see that happening. Uh, right now, the map has gotten more colorful from the National Weather Service. The entire uh, central uh, third of California is under a flash flood watch. This could be a major rainfall again, causing major problems in California right through the weekend. Very heavy snow expected in the Sierra Nevada, more feet expected on top of what we've already had. Significant snow as well across the rest of the interior of the Northwest, including the coastal range here and the uh, Northern Rockies right on through the Tetons and Bighorns. Uh, we do have winter storm advisories over parts of Montana and Colorado. And then our first of several storms moving across the Northern tier of the country has winter weather advisories posted from Montana over to Northwestern New Jersey right on through the beginning of the weekend. And embedded in that, we'll see more significant snow uh, around the Sioux Falls, or not Sioux Falls, but uh, Huron, South Dakota region, as well as Southeast Minnesota, Northeast Iowa, and sneaking across Western Wisconsin, Northwest Illinois. Right now that stays north of Chicagoland, but we do see the Michigan, Lake Michigan shoreline from uh, the Illinois border all the way up to just south and east of Green Bay is under a winter storm warning for what we're expecting to move in here later today into tonight. 
with significant snow totals expected. And I would not be shocked if in this region we saw an upgrade coming. Regardless, it's going to be significant snowfall in areas that still need to catch up on low snow totals so far this year. I'm going to show you the HRRR from weatherbell.com. You can see the storm evolving here across the plains. This is 7 this morning, Eastern, 6 Central. And as the uh, morning wears on, we see snow intensifying around Omaha and then spreading east into Des Moines, where initially it'll be rain, but then changing over to some wet snow. And then heavier amounts of snow are expected around lunchtime into this afternoon across the entire upper Midwest as our low pressure system um, continues to spin up. Now in the Chicagoland area, uh, around your evening rush, right now I'm expecting this to be primarily rain. But as the evening wears on, as it gets dark out, we see a change over to snow and it could be intense for a few hours. We could see a few inches of snow accumulating through this evening in Chicago and then letting up overnight and by tomorrow morning. Still some snow falling lightly tomorrow morning and some enhancement from Lake Michigan. But as we get to about this time tomorrow morning around 7 Eastern, the majority of the snow is starting to taper off over the Lake Michigan region, still coming down around Detroit and Toledo, but then spreading into western PA. But if you see here, and I will zoom in in just a second, uh, if you see around Pittsburgh and Morgantown, there is a warmer layer coming in. The storm track, again, is going to favor snow on the front end, quickly changing over to liquid. So not a major snow in southwestern PA. We see more of that snow confined more to the interior of central and northern Pennsylvania. But even close to Baltimore and D.C., and especially um, around Germantown, central Maryland, uh, the Shenandoah Valley, uh, this could uh, accumulate for a few hours tomorrow morning before a change over to more liquid. Uh, but again, this looks like an interior northeast snowfall here uh, right on through Friday into Friday night and then beginning to wrap up on Saturday morning uh, west of 95. Still some snow in the forecast here early in the day. Let me zoom in and show this to you guys here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll look at the northeast and let me uh, scale this back here a little bit so you can see here's when things move in around five six in the morning tomorrow morning and then spreading across pennsylvania and you can see as it gets into the philly area it's all liquid here really no chance to see any accumulating snow new york you're kind of right on the line it's like if you're north of the lincoln tunnel you're getting some snow if you're south it's primarily rain this could shift a little on each on each side you know of the pendulum so that's something to be aware of but really this is not going to be a major snowfall for the big cities of the Northeast. We may see a little snow in Boston early in the morning on Saturday, and I'll show you all the NAM models so you can see out a little bit further than this. This is 5 a.m. Saturday morning. You can see though, as the storm moves towards Boston and Providence, uh, it is already entraining some drier air and beginning to kind of get squashed farther south and east and pull away. So rather than coming up the coast into the area that's getting blocked off here by the colder air mass, the storm center is actually going to pull away more to the south and east. And so we just see a thin deformation zone of snow here over northern and eastern PA and central New York, right over the twin tiers. And then maybe Philly gets a little bit of backside snow Saturday morning around 8, 9 in the morning, but it's not going to be much. Uh, zooming in to show you all some potential totals here. Oops, let me go down and show you the winter storm totals. We see that amounts are, are, are pretty minimal when you get to New York City, maybe an inch or so, less than an inch in Boston. Uh, maybe a half inch if we're lucky around Philly and, Tr and uh, Camden and Cherry Hill, uh, but most of our snow totals are going to be back here over western and central New York, north central PA. Areas that just got snow a couple days ago, get it again. Areas that did not, don't get it again. Sounds like the theme of the entire winter here. Back in the Great Lakes, though, on the NAM, you can see potentially 10 inches of snow around Milwaukee and especially around Sheboygan and, and Waukesha and Racine and those areas up to 8 inches around uh appleton and green bay and locally higher amounts are possible in this zone here in fact uh, if you see this max of 23 inches that's probably going to be the white mountains the presidential range but um half of that could fall somewhere here in the bullseye so that's just something for you guys to see and then across the upper midwest let me back this up a little bit for y'all i'm going to find it there we go upper midwest uh whoops north central that's what i meant you can see uh potentially close to a foot coming in here with the next storm over the weekend here over the Dakotas and sneaking into western Minnesota. And it's been a very snowy winter in this part of the country. Um, we may have a top five winter for snow across the Twin Cities, for example, in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Well, we've got several more inches coming as we head towards the weekend. Uh, we'll look at temperatures here. You can see it's still warm on the Gulf Coast, but turning chillier as we get towards the weekend. We've got a front that's going to drop down here, and it's not going to cool you off this weekend in Texas or Louisiana. But as we get to next week, Monday, 
and Tuesday, you can see much colder air ejects southeastward here from the Dakotas, and we go to a below normal pattern for a few days here in the southeast, right on through the middle of next week. This is going to be on the tail end of the nor'easter I'm going to show you in just a second. It does warm back up over the west. We've got kind of a ridge in place here, and that will spread warmth back into the central parts of the country. I don't think it's going to last very long based on the uh, phase of the MJO being in the 8 and 1. That is a cold pattern for the east. But we do see a brief break here towards the second part of next week in the cold before it gets colder again. And you can see by next weekend, starting mild and then turning much colder in the west. And this cold should expand eastward with time behind our next storm, which will be moving into the eastern U.S. next weekend. So we have a progressive pattern where it's going to get colder, but only last a few days. And then another wave of cold drops straight down from the northwest into the southeast. And then that follows with a brief warm up and then another cold. So rather than it being widespread cold day after day after day, we do get a few breaks, but only briefly. Uh, we're not going to see persistent warmth in the weather pattern that we're in right now. Here's a look at the European model, and you all can see Storm 1 moving through the Great Lakes and sneaking into the northeast here tomorrow and tomorrow night, and then kind of moving out to sea. It strengthens, but it moves out to sea. Storm 2 that moves into Oregon and California here batters the west, then moves on to the Rockies Friday night, Saturday morning, into the plains on Saturday. We've got more rain across the deep south where we really don't need it this weekend. And then as we get into Sunday evening, we could see kind of a wintry mess on the uh, onset of this over western parts of Virginia, West Virginia into central Maryland. I don't know why that jumped there, but as you can see here, the European model takes our low pressure system that forms here and deepens it pretty quickly over the Delmarva as close to the coast as it looks like it'll be. That looks like rain. But as we get more into Monday night, Tuesday, gosh, stop jumping already. The low pressure continues to bomb out and this low could be over here. It could be here, <clears throat> but the farther west it goes, the more intense the snow ends up being farther inland and the more likely we have rain in the big cities. But I'll show you the GFS and it's going to be a little bit different looking. In fact, <clears throat> oops, here's a GFS. <clears throat> And you can see that low comes through the Carolinas here Sunday night and then moves up the East Coast. And this one's over Cape Cod. So the European has it over Connecticut. The GFS has now brought it back to Cape Cod. This would be more, more um, efficient for snow producing across Long Island, Connecticut, uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Maine. And if this continues to crawl up the coast, um, it will continue to batter the area with heavy waves, uh, high winds, cold temperatures, and significant amounts of snow. So this definitely has the look of a nor'easter the way it's coming up. Every storm we've had is kind of cut this way around the Appalachians and then tried to reform this way. This storm is actually coming right up the coast. We have not seen that yet this winter. This is quite a difference. We would see this normally pretty much every winter, but this winter has just been something special and we haven't seen it. So this is going to be prepared to be uh, changing the weather quite a bit for us here before it heads out. And I wanted to show you the GFS. This is the run from uh, Tuesday evening, and as I move forward with each run here, this is tropicaltidbits.com. You can get this for free, by the way, if you'd like. You can see how the low trends. It's starting to get closer to the coast here, and then back off again, and then uh, where's 8Z, uh, 18Z, tracking closer to the coast, and then shifting even closer, and then with the latest run, showing up even closer than that. So the trend in the GFS has been to bring this sucker closer to the coast. Remember, it wasn't even on the map a few days ago. It was all the way off the coast. Then it was well offshore. And then with each run, we've seen it kind of come more into line with the European. That's why I've been showing you the European for several days, because I like to see consistency. It may not play out this way, uh, but certainly seeing consistency, seeing where everything is kind of shaping up to be, gives us an idea and some clues as to where this will be. And now the GFS... While it's not exactly what the European shows, does have the bigger coastal low here right over Cape Cod and does have the heavy snow back across New England. Um, and there's still a possibility that this trends back to the west or even the southwest. And if it stays off the coast and wraps up in here and begins to become negatively tilted, then there's no um, guarantee or I shouldn't say there's no guarantee, but there's a better shot that we see accumulation farther south and west in the Midwest in the Mid-Atlantic region, including Delaware, Maryland and Pennsylvania. I'm not seeing that today on the model runs, but there is still a possibility that things could shift. All right, so let's move to the west and look at snow totals real fast. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, 
but it's piling up here over the next 10 days on the European. Many places are getting several feet of snow and uh, 120, 140, 160 inches, just pretty insane here in California. Uh, moving across to the Northern Plains, we see here storm one here. This is through Friday morning, generally three to six inches of snow, not a huge deal for this area. The next storm though, that's moving into the West will bring heavier amounts into Northeast Montana and the far other upper parts of the Midwest. We're looking at over a foot of snow in many of these areas in here and on the Superior shoreline. And then yet another storm looks like it'll come in at the end of next week. And that one could be a really big one here in Northern Minnesota into Northwest Ontario. Looking farther South and East across the Midwest here, because I know you wanna see snow in the Ohio River Valley. We just keep getting missed. Here's storm one, I've kind of already shown you that. Here's storm two, that's gonna add higher amounts in across Northern Wisconsin and Upper Michigan. But you can see Chicago may get a couple inches out of this. Detroit may get a few inches, but around Columbus, Indianapolis, Peoria, we are getting closer to seeing maybe some accumulating snow. And then, oh, by the way, here's another storm moving into the picture here next weekend. That's something we'll be watching as we get beyond the 18th and 19th of the month. And then in the Northeast, I'm not going to show you anything down South because it's just not really anything too exciting to talk about. This is the storm through this weekend, six, seven, eight inches in the Twin Tiers, a few inches in Toronto. Here is the storm moving in next week, and here are the numbers piling up. This is Monday afternoon and Monday night, the Catskills, the interior, New England, and uh, West Virginia mountains all through Tuesday morning getting crushed with over a foot of snow, maybe two feet and possibly even three feet somewhere in here. And, and it's tough to say, is it gonna be in this zone in here? Or is it gonna be back in the Northeast? Or is it even gonna try to shift and hit the I-95 cities for the first time? We'll just have to see at this point. But this is uh, from the, um, I was gonna show you guys, oh, the GFS. Come on, baby. <laughs> My computer is, is really trying to get through all these tabs. Man, it's like anxiety over here. But you can see the GFS here does a lot better across central and southern New England with up to 18, 18 inches around Manchester, 15, 16 in Lowell, 13 in Boston. This is through Tuesday morning and then a little bit more possible. And then again, this is farther off in, in out of our range, really. But next weekend, another huge storm moving into the east and these numbers start climbing in Philly and New York and definitely Albany and, and Binghamton and Ithaca and these areas. Um, I mean, this is <laughs> this is a winter weather weenies dreamland. If, you, if you're not seeing snow in the cities, just go an hour north or go an hour west if you're in Allentown, wherever. But over the next 16 days, the GFS says winter ain't done yet, uh, right on through the 24th and 25th. All right, rain out west, a big deal here. We're looking at potentially a foot or even more than a foot of liquid, uh, six to eight inches around Santa Cruz, three to four in Monterey, three around San Fran, even a couple up to you know, uh, Coos Bay in those areas, some significant precip in the mountains. Um, that's not gonna be a big deal, but definitely potential flooding in Nevada and certainly California and Southwest Oregon. See quite a bit of rain as well down South here. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about severe weather in just a sec too, but over an inch of rain, maybe two to three by next week uh, in the Delta region over into Alabama. And I'll show you that as we look farther East and some rain coming to Florida. It's not gonna be a lot, um, but it will certainly, converge on South Florida by the middle of next week. And we definitely need some rain down here. And it's not a lot yet, but we see heavier amounts around Tampa Bay, even to um, Daytona and especially the northern parts of Florida. But unfortunately, the heavier amounts are in places that don't need to see any more rain. And the lighter amounts are in places that do. And that's just how things are, are kind of set up right now. And in the Northeast, uh, obviously a lot of this is gonna be snow, but we see with our storm track next week, significant amounts of liquid on the east coast and i think most of this is rain so another one to two inches around coastal jersey the delmarva and the long island and kevin McAllister says you guys in the northeast give up you thirsty for more all right so severe weather not not a big deal but um there could be a few warnings in here just a chance for some hail from east texas over into northwest alabama through tonight tornado and wind threats going to be pretty low though it looks like I'll put the cities on here. You can see Shreveport, uh, Greenville, Mississippi, Little Rock are all in this 5% zone. As we go to tomorrow, we see that severe threat actually shifting eastward towards Savannah and Valdosta and Tallahassee and Jacksonville and Lake City in Florida. So we definitely have the possibility of some hailers tomorrow. And we do have a threat for some severe wind. I don't think we're going to see tornadoes, but locally strong winds. There'll be kind of a line that drops southward here from Georgia 
And I wouldn't be shocked if this got adjusted northeastward a little bit more into the low country of South Carolina. If you look at the uh, SREF here, the SHREF, this is the uh, a chance to see some potential supercell storms. I think this will be overdone in Texas. But if you look at tomorrow, you can see actually the maximum is just up the river from Savannah and over into Beaufort County and Hardyville and those areas in South Carolina. So there could be a few local supercells which could produce some hail. And oh, by the way, there's another storm right behind it. Day three, we actually do have a slight risk now for Oklahoma and Arkansas, bounded by a marginal into North Texas. So uh, potentially we're looking at a better shot at some localized severe wind and hail, maybe a tornado or two at this point. And then as we get over to day four, and that is Sunday, that threat for severe weather drops south and east. Sorry for the animation there. And that includes Jackson, Mississippi, uh, getting down into Franklinton, Louisiana, and uh, Monroe, and southeastern Arkansas. This area could get expanded a little bit more, uh, but it includes 2 million people. So definitely be prepared on Sunday. If you have outdoor plans or you're going to church, you may have some severe weather that day as well. Lastly, we're not done with Freddie. It started February 5th. No, third back here over the eastern Indian Ocean. It hit Madagascar on the 21st as a strong tropical cyclone, then hit Mozambique as a weaker tropical cyclone. And sure enough, uh, it is back over water and expected to move northwest and make a, a third landfall in Mozambique here on Friday. Uh, this is going to be one of our longest lived storms ever. If you look at the GFS model, it says it's going to hit and then go right back out again. Uh, and move all the way down here into the southwestern Indian Ocean. The GFS model says um, we're going to have many more sequels of Freddy coming here. Just a very intense storm. Uh, it's not going to be as intense as it was originally, but still right over the Mozambique Channel, hitting Mozambique, sitting back and going right back out to sea here. This is the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, and eventually loses its tropical characteristics by about the 20th of March. So we're talking a tropical cyclone that will be on the map for 45 stinking days. Give me a break. Oh, my goodness. And the rain you can see is just very intense over the next seven days. Um, 1,500 millimeters, that's about 60 inches of rain on the coast of Mozambique. This will be a major natural disaster if the GFS turns out to be right. So I just wanted to make you aware of that in case you do have family or friends or any concerns out there in South Africa, uh, Mozambique and, and Madagascar. Major storm for you. Anyway. Thank you all so much for your time. God bless you. Uh, if you could subscribe to my channel, that I, I appreciate that support. It's not about me. I do want to say that what I do every day is about God. That's why I do what I do every day. Um, I've been called by God not only to be a meteorologist, but to share uh, what I believe will help save lives by preparing people for bad weather, but also perhaps helping to change lives by allowing Jesus Christ into your living room through uh, my weather video. That's what I've been called to do, Romans 8, 28. Wanted to read a quick verse because I think it's very important. Uh, it spoke to me. I picked this up at the Y yesterday, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Whether or not you're a believer, I think there's a point in somebody's life where they will even acknowledge God and say, God, I need your help, or oh my God, or whatever, or you know, maybe you're on your deathbed, or you've gone through a very tragic or traumatic situation. Uh, but nonetheless, God gets brought up. And I think when you live your lives every day, the more appreciative you are that you've been created by God, the more God will work within you. He does not want us to be anxious and to try and lean on our own understanding. He wants us to go to him uh, by prayer and petition. And prayer is just talking. It's just a conversation with God. If you, if you shut up, which I need to do more, then you actually should listen to God because he'll talk back to you. He'll show you through his many, um, his many miracles what he can really do through you. But by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. When I talk to God every night, I start off by thanking him for what I do have and not so much focusing on what I don't have. But eventually there comes a situation where you need God to intervene. You need him to make something change for you. You need him to show you the way, the light through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you are a believer like I am, then I'm happy to pray for you. If you are not, this is not an in your face. Oh my goodness. I can't believe you don't believe in God. Look, I'm 40 years old and it took me 30 years just to acknowledge God uh, and to become a Christian man. Now over 10 years, it's taken me some more time just to develop the courage to share my faith with folks. But I, what I do want to say is that, um, 
I'm happy to pray for you regardless of what your belief system is or where, whatever you're living in. And I'm happy to pray for others as well uh, in your lives because I b- really believe God can speak to us in many volumes and he can do a lot for us. But we need to slow down, listen, and to stop worrying about trying to do it all ourselves. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry, my voice gotten a little bit weird today, but I think it's allergy season, of course. Uh, but I, I look forward to tomorrow's video again. If you could subscribe, you'll get it firsthand. Thanks, folks. Have a great day. God bless you.